Well, it's been a while. Welcome back to the big board. Well, I'm taking a look at Course on Pocket 2. It's a pre-production prototype, let's call it that. I think there's half a dozen or five of them made and I've mentioned that previously. I've got Scenario 4 set up for the second time. First time we had a little cat interference that demolished the board and I got kind of ticked off with it. So we're back now. And I thought what might be interesting is to share what the vitro conditions are in a video, look at where the forces are disposed around the map, look at where the historical attack occurred and what my potential plans are. And, and we'll talk about the victory conditions and stuff like that. So let's start with victory conditions for scenario four, which is the sort of hammer blow effort by uh, the, the, the German player or the Germans to break into the pocket and relieve uh, the forces there and the, the ensuing counterattack to stop that with second tank army. Uh, so lots of combat probably going to happen, which will be fun, right? I'll let us exercise the system a fair bit. <clears throat> so in order for us to replicate or achieve that success that the Germans need to uh, create to relieve the pocket in this particular game, given that it's a four map uh, system, we're really only dealing with this, you know, a uh, handful of days, I think it's four or five days at third through the ninth. Uh, so we're, you know, we're not dealing with a lot of time, nor are we dealing with the full gamut of the, of the game potential. So let's have a look. Uh, so the, the, the VCs are for a decisive victory, which there are only two modes of victory in this particular scenario. And you'd have an in-supply unit in one of these four uh, locations. And in, an in-supply unit has to be able to trace via road of any type back to a supply source and there's you know hex limitations with number of movement points to get to get to a road but given that all these towns start uh, or have roads leaving them and entering them that's basically keep a clear road path to uh to allow that uh, victory condition to uh, occur now that's a decisive victory pretty tough it's going to be pretty tough to achieve that even just looking at the map briefly and given the weather the mud and frozen and deep mud and all this sort of stuff uh the the movement penalties for uh trying to move through mud and deep mud are you know off the chain difficult so it's that's probably not my aspiration i'm going to take the easy path and just look for the german normal victory regular old just a win right for the germans and that would be Getting uh, a unit across this uh, Nyoli Chik Chik uh river in supply, got a bridgehead. It assumes that we're on the way to being successful, I guess, or something like that. So that's that's what we'll be aiming at doing is getting uh, putting somewhere from here across to there, somewhere over there, a unit in supply or units in supply. It's actually something I probably should check whether it's a unit or multiple units, as the case might be. So there's a couple of interesting things that kind of bubble up out of that, and that is this uh, ability for engineers to create uh, tracks and paths or extend roads or whatever the case may be. Now, whenever uh, mud or deep mud hits, they're, they're washed away, right? So you've got to kind of start again. But uh, that's just something that we need to keep in the back of our minds in terms of connecting uh, potential road avenues that might be blocked by the enemy or creating a path to allow a bridgehead to occur and then being able to hold on to that uh, for enough time would seem to me to be something we need to keep in the back of our minds, right? Okay, so for the, the Russians to win, really pretty straightforward, we've got to prevent the Germans from winning. And uh, this game and game system <clears throat> it doesn't really take into account, you know, broken status or morale. So, you know, you were able to burn out a unit pretty, pretty much. So I can see us already, as I look at the map, I can see me pushing a lot of Soviets into probably less than optimal attacks uh, initially, uh, just to try and soak up some damage with the Germans. That's a, that's a potential strategy here. The second thing would be 
uh, obviously building uh, fort fortifications with engineers and deepening the dug-in status that a normal unit can make for itself. You can uh, create fortifications and other entrenchments and stuff like that. So there's always lots of things for the engineers to be doing. Now let's uh, so that so that's the victory conditions and, and what the what the Germans did was somewhere around roughly here uh, in this sort of six or seven mile width uh, they I guess they they have 16th Panzer here and 17th Panzers over there uh, first SS Panzer and first Panzer are coming on the map just uh, off screen here somewhere in that zone and I guess they basically cut a path this way following those white crosses tile markers uh, and then got to roughly this area here by the evening of the 4th of February this scenario starts on the 3rd of Feb in the morning with a mud turn and then in the evening the pm turn is frozen as is the night turn is frozen as well uh obviously enough uh, and so that that's where they went now that means that they just sliced their way through 40th army the soviet 40th army here uh, i guess hot knife through butter type of thing but we know that we have second guard uh, not second guard second tank army arriving up here and headed this way. So with that in mind, when I was looking at, well, what am I gonna do? I've got 17th Panzer down here, 16th Panzer here. I collected up all of the sort of miscellaneous uh, ash and trash, the Baki group, uh, uh, KG Renz, Kampf Group Renz, and 158th I think is in here somewhere as well, which is a sort of a army attached regiment uh, of, of guys and clustered them here with uh, 16th on their left, uh, supported by some additional third panzer forces. Let me just uh, fix that little guy here. Yeah. Clustered my artillery in this area as well. And this is my what I think I'm gonna do uh, for this attack, for this uh, scenario. There's one of two things I'm going to do, and I'm set up to do this first thing, which is attack along. There's a seam basically along here between 359th and 167th. That uh, it's where the two are. There's two army groups that split the 40th, and I think this is six tank, six tank. And so uh, there's a little softness here, uh, and that may just be poor placement by me, but. I think that there's an opportunity to attack here, even though 5th Mech uh, is right there. Uh, so we could attack in here, up in here, push 16th in to do the follow-on once the, fro the Frozen hits, and then try and reach, uh, you know, so try and reach this sort of zone here, somewhere around here. I'm just going to put some markers down, right, without knocking the camera over. <laughs> be a first if I did that that would be very sad let's take him so I think something along those lines would be very interesting uh, sort of um, path of least resistance if I if I combine the two panzer divisions multiple uh, uh, foot formations here and motorized formations here to press in here then build uh, you know build some, not defenses, but, you know, build a line along these rivers, uh, streams here and try and crash, crash the, the river up here and set ourselves up for a, a modest victory that way. That seems to be potentially valuable. Allows me to bring 1st Panzer and 1st SS in uh, uh, off to the bottom of the screen to your left and <clears throat> bring those in as either follow-on forces or as a parrying thrust, I can bring them attack across here, push up this way, and then uh, interfere with second tank army reinforcements, slow them down, and potentially uh, create a twofold uh, pressure point for the 
uh, for the Russians to have to deal with. Now, the big challenge is there's nothing over here. There are no German forces over here in Fifth Guard Tank Corps, which is pretty thin, as uh, Jack pointed out to me. It's got three uh, tank brigades that are, that are four, four, twelves, you know, four attack, four defense, twelve move, uh, and a, a handful of infantry units, most of which are, well, there's hardly any here, but they're all reduced, I think. In fact, there's only one. You know, some mortars and rockets, and uh, there it is. There's two, uh, and two infantry, motorized infantry regiments, sorry, battalions that are reduced. And there's a second regiment, but that's pretty weak, 2712. Uh, so those guys could come this way and threaten our flank, threaten our supply line. I would potentially winnow off 198th and, and let them try and uh, protect this, this line here. I'm not too worried about them after sort of chatting it through with uh, Jack a little bit. And then I also think what we could do to reinforce the effort to go that direction is to uh, skinny this up as much as possible, uh, particularly if I bring first Panzer in and let them sort of try and punch a hole in here. That'll sort of potentially keep those forces at bay or, or, or be, have them sort of not, not go and try and support this, uh, support the main effort over here. Now, that, that, so that was my, that's my plan. The alternative is, I think, readjust how I've set up, leave the 16th where it is, leave the 17th where it is, that's basically where they have to be. Uh, but uh, take uh, all of these forces and reorient them uh, a little bit further over this way, or maybe uh, orient them to attack in this direction, and then take 17th and go hit this town and come up to this road here and then try and run to the river and get a crossing up here. Uh, once again, it's a path of least resistance, but it's the longest distance to travel. And I think to, in order to do that, it's kind of a backup plan in some ways. I could bring the two first Panzer units, the, the SS and the first Panzer, bring them in along this line while 17th went that way uh, and maybe supported by Baki uh, and Renz, Kampfgruppe Renz, and they can push in and then meet up somewhere around here. That also seems to me to be uh, potentially useful. And it's also the furthest away from the reinforcements that are coming in uh, all the way over there. Now, because this is an isolated scenario, what this doesn't take into account is the fact that there's another front here, right? There's another army group here. And I'm sure there's German forces down off here to the, to the right here. So there's other things going on over here. But in the context of this scenario, I think this river makes a pretty strong boundary. And uh, we could potentially argue that that would be a viable uh, mode to sort of race down the path and see if we can set up a victory for the... Uh, for the Germans in the, their attempt to relieve the pocket for uh, for the forces trapped uh, trapped in there. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to get into rules discussions and stuff like that now. We'll we'll, do, we'll kind of do a little bit of that as we recap. Uh, if you go to the blog, I've written one post on how combat works uh, and, and taken us through two combats there, and. I've got another post coming out tomorrow that will go through this plan that I just discussed here. Uh, but you can read about that and you can also read some excerpts from uh, a book that has sort of discusses the, uh, discusses the whole uh, situation, the whole course on pocket, pocket situation. And we can, uh, and you can sort of read up on that. Ideally, I'll be posting more about the gameplay as we go, but uh, that's... Uh, Whoops, excuse me, it was a little bit rough there, but basically that's the, that's the game plan. So look forward to catching you guys uh, following along and uh, offer some comments here on what you think about my game plan. Does it sound smart? Does it, uh, does it jibe with uh, what you think they should do? It's very hard to tell for me whether or not that's a, a good plan or not. Uh, the biggest issue is gonna be supply, trying to make sure that I've got a link to a rail line or a link to a road or, or either or both that connects south and that's this town here connecting to here basically uh, so that we can uh, drive uh, supply south or 
it's uh, it's creating creating uh, a connection here as well. That's the other option. So uh, some things like that we need to dig into. It's a, it's a little bit uh, it can get a little bit complicated. Um, and I didn't want to don't want to grind that too much. It's already fifteen minutes. All right. All the best. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and we'll talk real soon. Ciao.